Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, great to see so many familiar faces. Uh, thank you for all, all of you for being here today. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Alan Jones. I'm the president and the CEO of the Allen Institute. So today we have a really exciting announcement. Um, 15 years ago, Paul Allen had the keen vision to bring together some of the best and brightest in science with a commitment to accelerate our understanding of the human brain in both health and disease. In the years since, the team at the Allen Institute for Brain Science has not only been doing remarkable work, but has created resources and tools that we share openly, enabling thousands of other researchers around the world to do remarkable science as well. In 2014, we launched the Allen Institute for Cell Science, where collaborative teams are working together to investigate and model the extremely complex machinery of human cells. And in early 2016, if that weren't enough, we launched the Paul G. Allen Frontiers Group, a new division uh, dedicated to accelerating science through programs such as the Allen Distinguished Investigators and Allen Discovery Centers. None of this would have been possible without the extraordinary vision and generosity of our late founder, Paul Allen. Paul challenged us to go after the really hard problems, to unravel the complexity of, of biology and make a lasting impact on science that benefits all of us. Over the years, we've worked to help Paul realize his vision of a broad impact in bioscience. Paul proved that it's possible to tackle some of life's greatest mysteries in new ways. Today, we honor his legacy by launching a major new initiative, the Allen Institute for Immunology with the goal to understand one of the most complex systems in the human body, the human immune system. The new Allen Institute for Immunology will be funded by a $125 million commitment from our late founder, Paul Allen. It's a tremendous investment. Our new institute will work to understand the dynamic balancing act of the immune system, working directly with volunteers and patients through partnerships with a community of preeminent scientists and clinicians. To tell you more about the Institute and our partners, it's my pleasure to introduce you to the Executive Director of the Allen Institute for Immunology, Dr. Tom Bumal. Tom has spent the past 35 years working for Lilly Research Labs, most recently as Senior VP of Biotech and Immunolo Immunology Research Component and the site head of Lilly's Biotech Center in San Diego. His work at Lilly focused on drug discovery and early clinical development of treatments for many immune-related diseases, and we're thrilled to have him join the team. Please welcome Tom Bumal. Thank you, Ellen, uh, and thank all of you for being here. Today we're announcing an incredible initiative to better understand the human immune system. This is an unprecedented opportunity for someone like myself, having spent decades in immunology research and drug development. The field has had some recent advances that have clearly improved patient lives, but we also know that we are just scratching the surface of a huge unmet need. Millions of people around the world are suffering from and even dying of immune-related diseases. To truly make an impact for those patients, we need to take this research to the next level. The immune system is enormously complex. It's what's keeping all of us in the room healthy without even being aware of it. It takes care of that bee sting you got on that hike last summer, or helps heal your hand from that cut you got making Thanksgiving dinner, or stops that cold you picked up last week from your family. In other words, a silent guardians of the galaxy of you. Researchers have been studying the immune system for decades, but what we don't yet understand is its dynamic balance. What does a healthy immune system look like? How does it shift when our body encounters different environments? How does it change when we age? And what goes wrong when disease hits? When your immune system fails, its surveillance function is compromised, and you can't fight diseases often leading to chronic infections like hepatitis, or more serious diseases like cancer. As a cancer survivor myself, I well understand what happens when the immune system fails to eliminate the initial threat of a malignancy, and your body can no longer keep up and fight this relentless disease. And when the immune system is on overdrive, people may experience anything from allergies, asthma, eczema, to a, a group of autoimmune diseases such as type 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, or Crohn's disease. Somehow in these common conditions, the immune system has lost its balance and is out of control. 
it actually is confused and misdirects its defenses on our own normal tissues, which can lead to an actual immune-mediated self-destruct mechanism, with, of course, serious consequences to the patient. We all have been or will be affected by immune-related conditions, or we all know someone we love who is affected. We need to find better, safer treatments that lead to healthy outcomes for patients. And we are here today to contribute to that goal. Paul Allen challenged us to take powerful technology and a unique approach of the Allen Institute and integrate it with cutting edge immunology research. We wanna shorten the time it takes from experiments in the lab to reach the bedside in the clinic. He knew that the field of immunology research was poised to make a big leap forward for patients if we put a dedicated effort and investment behind it. The initial diseases we will study are two cancers, specifically multiple myeloma and melanoma, as well as rheumatoid arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease, which includes Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Significantly, we will also take a deep dive into the immune system of healthy volunteers. The goal is to understand what a healthy immune system looks like, how we can measure that, and how that immune system changes over time. A long-term study of both patients and volunteers like this has never been done before, and it's what the field is sorely lacking. Right now, we define immune health when it has failed us or when it goes into overdrive. Through the Allen Institute for Immunology, we'll ultimately create for the first time a better definition of a healthy immune system and approaches to keep it in balance when it goes awry. At the Allen Institute, we pride ourselves on our large-scale industrial approach to science. Our teams conduct research in this remarkable state-of-the-art research building. To work directly with patients and volunteers, we've partnered with some of the preeminent immunology researchers and research organizations in the country. They've joined us here today, and it's my pleasure to introduce them, and I would ask that they please stand when I read their name. Dr. Jane Buckner from the Benaroya Research Institute. From the Fred Hutch, Dr. Stan Riddell, Rafael Guitardo, and Phil Greenberg. Dr. Gary Firestein from the University of California, San Diego. Drs. Kevin Dean and Michael Hollers from the University of Colorado, and Dr. John Weary from the University of Pennsylvania. We are proud. <laughs> we are proud to partner with such a visionary group of researchers and clinicians. I'll let them tell you more about their perspectives and the contributions they will make to the Allen Institute for Immunology in this short video. The immune system is very complex. It exists everywhere in our bodies and at all sites, from the skin to the eyes to the heart, the lungs, the organs. It has a couple of places where it's concentrated in the body, in the bone marrow and in the spleen. But parts of the immune system go everywhere. The immune system in many ways is a sensory organ as much as it is an organ that's protecting us. It's seeing everything that's going on in your body all the time in an immune cell that's circulating in your blood in your left hand may end up in your heart in an hour. The next day it may be circulating through your brain surveying for something wrong. Every day most of us wake up and we don't think about our immune system, but it's hard at work. But then the immune system makes a mistake and it causes autoimmunity by attacking healthy tissue. What we're trying to understand is what is the mistake that was made? And I think the important part is that we've realized over the years that if you're going to understand what's wrong with someone who's sick, you better understand how the immune system works in a healthy person. You know, there's two things we look at it when we talk about immunotherapy, what's going on. There's people who respond very well, people who do not respond necessarily very well. And we're trying to understand that, what's different between these two set of people. Working with the Allen Institute will be able to do that, not only go and generate data across many different patients in the trial, but also go very deep in looking at what are the differences between the immune cells and the cancer cells, and how are these important in predicting responses to therapy. The responses that are being seen with manipulating the immune system now are really dramatic, but we know that we are really at the very beginning of this. We're just starting to understand how to do it. Technologies exist to make this better. There's no question it's gonna be better. It's already a standard part of, of a lot of treatments which didn't exist just four or five years ago. So it, it's a very exciting time. Generating new knowledge is always very important. It allows people to gain new insights about fundamental mechanisms of biology. 
but one of the chief goals of this project and the partners and the institute would be to generate data that can then move medicine forward. So we are not just focused on generating data for data's sake or doing science for science's sake. Our touchstone for this is our patients. We expect our data to provide clues to basic scientists around the world, but we also expect people, including ourselves, to capitalize and leverage that so that we can then move some of these ideas from the laboratory and into the clinic. Industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the biotechnology industry is very much focused on taking what's learned in science and making drugs for that that work. The Allen Institute is perfectly positioned to be able to take all of the information from many people, bring it together, apply these incredibly complicated technologies and computational capabilities, and bring that together and make discoveries. So we're essentially looking at the immune system like a new opportunity for developing drugs. If we can understand the immune system, we can turn it in the patient's favor to treat many, many diseases. What we learn about healthy people will be immediately translatable to people with an immune disease. So our goal is to be the heart of this project in terms of developing our understanding of human health and working very closely with our partners who are studying diseases of the immune system. I think the biggest impact that will come out of this unique collective with the Allen Institute for Immunology is understanding how the immune system behaves in both health and disease and be able to translate that into not only better therapies for people with conditions that can be related to the immune system like cancer, like autoimmune disease, but really get at the core of this, which would be prevention. Well, I think if we do this right, we will change the way we practice medicine. We will change medical ideas about what immunology is, and we will turn immunology into a clinical discipline. We're at a point where the more we understand, the more likely we're going to be able to turn these partially effective therapies where we're curing 20% of patients to be curing 80 or 90%. So this is big, and the unprecedented depth with which the Allen Institute for Immunology is committed to looking at the immune system is going to provide information that the scientific community would otherwise not have for many, many years. And it's going to accelerate discovery, accelerate innovation, and benefit patients. Thank you again to all of our partners who were very generous with their time to make this video. Uh, they're very busy with their patients and their research, so we really appreciate it. Through this extraordinary collaboration, we'll be generating enormous amounts of data. And as we do at the Allen Institute, we intend to share the data through data releases openly on a new centralized website for use by researchers across the world. The implications of a database like this and follow-up research are significant. For the first time, we'll share molecular details of the immune system over time in groups of volunteers and patients with accompanying medical information. This high-resolution look at the system will not only help our understanding of the immune system, but be critical to provide mechanistic, therapeutic, and diagnostic insights into the initial diseases under study. And that's just the beginning. Our team is excited to unravel the complexity of the immune system and, most importantly, change the way we treat patients with immune-related diseases and impact the world for generations to come. Thank you all so much, and I'll ask Alan Jones to help lead the Q&A. All right, thank you so much. So I think now we're gonna be taking uh, questions both from the audience, and then I believe there are people uh, from the web who are listening in as well who might have questions. So Jennifer's got the mic here, and she'll hand it. Thank you. Uh, I'm Alan Boyle with GeekWire. I wanted to ask uh, how Paul Allen uh, went through this process. I, I assume that it's a very long process, and, and uh, what sort of motivations he might have expressed. Uh, did this figure into, did his, his own uh, illness figure into how uh, this whole enterprise was weighed? Thank you. So, it's a great question. Um, we actually, so when we were doing our planning for the Frontiers Group uh, several years ago, if you remember, we launched that in 2016, um, we were out surveying and hearing really around the globe 
what was on the cusp, but were things that people were really excited about. And uh, something that thematically came up over and over again was that immunology was really ripe for a big investment in some way. And so um, rather than do that through the frontiers group mechanisms, which are these Allen Discovery Centers and Allen Distinguished Investigators, uh, we started investigating whether or not we should do something here in Seattle as part of the Allen Institute family uh, with the same kind of open big science, team science approach that we have. Um, and so uh, that began in earnest uh, around 2017 or so. And like we do with all of these things, we convene the experts. We had a number of convenings of these folks. Paul was, I know he was at least at two of them uh, throughout um, the uh, subsequent time. Uh, and so I think it's, it's such a fascinating area. We're, Paul was always someone who was driven by understanding this complexity in biology. Um, and I think he just got more and more excited about that. Um, and then we certainly, when we got Tom to join us and added the dimension of uh, the, the, the clinical aspect, I think he was even more excited. So, um, and that happened this year to the point in which we had all the pieces together to, to review with him in August. Um, and I don't know, Tom, Tom likes to talk about this meeting that we had with Paul in August. Is that these are, they were great kind of exchanges where uh, he really pushes, he pushes really hard. Uh, and, and I think that that's just what makes this place so unique and, and um, a great impactful place. Uh, I don't, Tom, you wanna? No, I'll just add that I've had a chance to work with uh, a lot of brilliant people in my life, including the folks we have here today that are our new partners. Uh, those meetings were uh, amazing. Uh, you, you knew you were in the presence of an incredible intellect and the challenges to dig deeper, to go way beyond the data, which you heard thematically in our comments, was there. It's, uh, you know, sort of data does not equal knowledge. He was really looking for mechanistic insights and, and reconstructing the biology, and it was very inspiring to hear that, uh, you know, as a motivator because, that's really what we're all interested in, is getting to the real reasons for why things happen in the system. And he said, okay, 125 million. Uh, so we, we typically build in these plans and the framework. So it's the, the we always start with the science, because that's the most important part, and then drop in all the other operational and other pieces there. And that's for the, the first five years with some very ambitious uh, milestones and goals. So Alan and Tom, this is so very exciting. Um, congratulations on uh, moving this through the process. I know it does take uh, many years to Alan's point about to, to get to where you are today. This seems to have a little bit more of a clinical translational bent than the brain and the cell bio. Can you comment on that or is that a direction that the Institute's leaning toward? So, uh, another great question. Indeed, that is, uh, it represents, I think, a difference in, in the really basic science-focused efforts that we've had in brain and cell science to date. Um, we're really excited about it. I, I think it was um, finding yet another area of interest in human biology. Um, you know, I think if we could go in and easily uh, serial sample human brains um, uh, for our brain science projects, we would probably be into that. Um, uh, so I think some, sometimes it's the limitations, um, and that is the, the one really exciting and beautiful aspect of, of being able to do this, is that you can go into humans uh, and you can really start to see the immune system in action and you can assay people over time uh, in ways that we simply don't have access uh, for the brain. And just to add, I mean, we're gonna springboard from the 15-year history of this place and we're replicating all the best practices on single-cell transcriptomics and. And, and epigenetics and other strategies that have been pioneered here in the study of both the mouse and human brain. Uh, our collaborators have been really helpful in helping us get started. We also have those tools, as you know, of 30 or 40 years of monoclonal antibodies and Cytoff and flow cytometry, and now the ability to measure hundreds and hundreds of proteins in plasma and serum. We can really get a very much more detailed look at a system that we can sample with the blood. 
But we're not just going to stop with the blood. We're also going to look at some of these diseased tissues, like the rheumatoid arthritis joint, the, the GI system that has IBD. Uh, and we're going to begin to compare the system in the periphery, but also the system in the microenvironment. We think that's going to be very exciting. Questions? Do we have any from the... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. All right, that's uh, cool. I, I, you know, <laughs> take that air for sure. Uh, I think I saw that there were going to be 70 to 80 people involved in the institute. Maybe you could uh, provide the details about how this is going to be staffed. And then also, I, I'm sure there are a lot of patients who are going to be wondering, wow, this sounds like something I want to sign up for. And, and how, how are the patients going to get involved and how many patients do you expect to be involved in the work in the first stage? So we will build in a, a strong internal team here, and we're just recruiting the leadership for that team, some of which is with us today. Uh, it'll be here in this building, where there is still open space to expand, and roughly going to 60 to 70 people, maybe a little more. And the idea is that that dedicated group will be working with these partners uh, who also have research capabilities they're bringing uh, to this alliance. This is truly an, a, a group of of, of six institutions basically working together for these goals, where we all want to study the fundamental immune system of normals, but we want to make those comparisons to these really interesting disease cohorts. We're still determining the size of these cohorts. In fact, our scientific advisory board gave us a lot of advice as to exactly how we should look at that, but uh, so some of that's to be determined, but they'll be, they'll be sized correctly to, to hopefully get good insights. Question, Jennifer, here. So it's an interesting group of diseases that you're looking at here. Do you want to talk a little bit about the relationship um, between, I don't always think about, well, I do actually think about cancer and arthritis together because my uh, father-in-law has been treated with rituximab, does wonders for his arthritis. So, right. um, but do you want to just talk a little bit about how you chose those? No, it's a, it's a terrific question. We actually talked to, to over 40 sites who had different strategies to propose to us. And given the guidance that uh, Alan Jones and Paul Allen gave us is, you know, try to plan some strategies that we'll see both short-term, mid-term, and long-term impact. We tried to, you know, select under those criteria because there were many unfunded, unpartnered strategies that we wanted to do. We hope that could be possible in the future. But in the cancer side, we really wanted some patients that were receiving immunotherapy, immuno-oncology drugs. Uh, obviously, melanoma is a very immune-responsive tumor, and yet we really want to understand immune capacity in that context. Those are patients that you know, could have all three of those possible outcomes, stability, remission, uh, progression. Uh, but a very interesting way to follow that longitudinally uh, in terms of immune health uh, and capacity of the human. On the other side of that spectrum in cancer, working with the Fred Hutch, are highly treated refractory patients who've been through a lot and are now getting experimental therapies. Uh, again, immune capacity and health is important there because we're trying to get the immune system to work more effectively to treat the disease. As you know, this is an incurable disease at this moment, and we'd like to sort of increase the odds for patients to see a better immune system in that context. The beauty of the latter is we'll also get the opportunity for samples of the bone marrow at the site of, uh, of the cancer as well. So we'll be able to study the system in the periphery and also at the site. On the autoimmune side, uh, very interesting and challenging. There were so many, I spent the last 20 years really in auto, autoimmunity, and, I had a lot of ideas when we started that we decided not to do, but you know, I've known a few of these individuals here, particularly Gary, for a long time, and the concept of actually studying disease before it happens is the focus of the rheumatoid arthritis project. These are patients through biomarkers who are at risk for developing disease but don't have diagnostic RA. We want to take that high-resolution look at the system as people transition, and we think that'll be, we hope, a really great insight into into mechanisms of what goes wrong, as Jane commented in the video, as Kevin commented in the video. But more importantly, I think it'll give us insights into things like prevention, which 
is something, for instance, my former industry rarely looks at. We're always interested in treating existing disease. So I think that's a really cool angle. And then we took IBD. Why? Because it's a huge unmet need. There are therapies that work, but if you've looked at the, the basis of approval of these drugs, their margin over standard of care is so small. These are effective, but they're not effective. And we want to follow the same fate of existing standard of care therapies in that context to understand why do some patients progress? Why do some patients stabilize? Why do some people go into remission? Understanding that we think is going to spotlight, elucidate, you know, where to go next. So they were deliberately picked to help impact. Okay, sounds like we have a question from the web. Yes, this question's from Vivian Marks at Nature Research. Two parts, can you speak a little about what it means to dig deeper into the data, and will you be developing new tools for the community? No, it's, uh, when, we, when we last met uh, with Paul Allen, uh, he asked that exact question, so it's a great question. <laughs> he, he, uh, he said, okay, I know we have these great technologies, and we can create all this really exciting data. He goes, how do you go beyond that? And, and so our promise to our founder and to Alan was that we were going to de dedicate over half our group to sort of the tools of experimental immunology and computational biology. And we do anticipate that we're going to generate new tools because some of this data is, is the basis of technologies that are three, four, five years, even a year old. We're going to integrate these cutting edge technologies with the analysis tools, not just for us and for our partners and patients, but as tools we hope for the world. Questions? All right. Is that a wrap? Yes? That's a wrap. Excellent. Well, let me thank you all for joining us here today. Uh, another thank you and a round of applause for our partners here for being with us. And, and finally, a, a thank you to Paul Allen and his family. Um, this is just a, a, a we, we feel that this is a truly honoring Paul's vision and his deep commitment to science. Uh, he well realized that this is the century of biology. Um, we're on the brink of many exciting discoveries and ultimately a deeper knowledge of human health and disease. Um, we invite you now to join us upstairs on the sixth floor in our cafe for a lunch. Um, thank you and have a good afternoon. <laughs>